My name is John Quintrell from Helena, Montana, and I served in Vietnam from 1968 to 1969. The unit that I served with was the 25th Infantry Division, the 2nd and the 27th Wolfhounds. There were tragic times. There were times that we lost guys uh, to booby traps. We got a lot of wounded from booby traps. And of course, uh, there was one incident, it was called Diamond One, Diamond Fire Support Base, where uh, our fire support base got overrun by two regiments of, of NVA. And the only reason I'm sitting here talking is because I happened to be one of the guys that was out on the ambush patrol that night. And we, the ambush patrol, faced 300 NVA, and we, uh, there was only 14 of us out that night. And uh, we actually were in combat. We were, we were in contact with them. And they were, it turned out they were a weapons company, and they were going to be uh, touching off mortars and rockets to hit Diamond before the, inf the NVA infantry uh, overran and human waved the base. So that incident, or that uh, night, all of the second platoon members that stayed back in the fire support base were killed, with the exception of one guy and uh, he, was, he was wounded real bad. So now, when we came back to the fire support base, there was only eight of us left, which was kind of odd because when I walked into the platoon, there was only eight. And so and it was basically for the same reason. Our, uh, our, our platoon just got, just got beat up. Unfortunately, the country was very unhappy about the Vietnam War, and it was almost as though they were trying to forget that the Vietnam War ever happened. And of course, when uh, I came home, I came home with a expectation of of being welcomed and and my family and so forth. And unfortunately, that didn't happen. Uh, when I got off the plane at Travis. Air Force Base, and I and I went to leave the base. Uh, there was a group of protesters waiting, and they threw all kinds of produce at us and got in our faces and called us baby killers and and uh, told us that we had uh, killed innocent people, and and it was just bizarre because we were caught completely off guard. And when I got home, even uh, one of the neighbor uh, men that I had grown, grown up with all my life lived across the street. And he came up to me as I was unloading the trunk of my car, and I thought he was coming over to welcome me home and, or maybe give me a hug even. And instead, he got in my face and he told me I should be ashamed of myself. And uh, this has just hit me right between the eyes. I couldn't believe it. And then he went on to tell me how I had killed innocent babies and women and children and so forth. And something happened inside of me. I determined right then and there that I was not going to tell anybody I was a Vietnam veteran. And I kept that promise for 33 years. My personal experience was is the 365 days that I was in Vietnam, I actually lost 49 men. And they were all KIA, which is an absolute horrible number. Something that a, a combat veteran stays with him all of his life or his, or his buddies. The ones that died, in many instances, stay even more profound because they were there. You, they were with you. I, I had experiences of, of my men dying in my arms, for instance. Uh, I had instances where the guy next to me, a foot away from me, got killed and I didn't. And that brings in another aspect of of kind of a, a survivor's guilt aspect. But on Memorial Day, it really focuses. It brings a laser focus to the fact that these guys really did not die in vain. Memorial Day is very important that we remember we grieve and we mourn, but we also celebrate the outcome, you know? And that's, you know, I think that's why we go uh, 
and serve in the military is that we want to preserve our way of life. And, you know, I've been asked before, would you do it over again if you had a chance? And I always, I don't hesitate. I always say I really would.